Thank you HubSpot for sponsoring this video. Are you looking to start your career in the cloud this year but not sure where to begin? With so much advice out there, it can get a bit overwhelming. Maybe you're a student trying to break into tech or you're someone looking for a career shift. Either way, cloud computing is one of the fastest growing areas in tech right now. And if you want to tap into this booming industry, you're in the right place. Now, over the years, I've had the opportunity to help hundreds of cloud learners through one-on-one -on -one mentoring sessions. I also have two years of industry experience working as a solutions architect at AWS. And so in this video, I'll be sharing my honest tips and advice based on my personal learnings. Most importantly, I'll explain what cloud companies really want to see when hiring candidates. So make sure you watch all the way to the end. By the way, if you'd like free cloud learning resources and the latest AI news sent straight to your email, make sure you subscribe to my newsletter, cloudbytes.ai. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. All right, let's get into it. The first tip I want to stress is don't take shortcuts. Do not try to skip any important steps, whether it's rushing through certifications, avoiding hands-on projects, or simply not applying for enough jobs. I've seen some great cloud learners with all the right skills struggle to find a job, and this is because they either didn't fully prepare or tried to find an easy way out. What you need to know is that each step of the cloud learning journey is equally as important. The first step is to start learning, more specifically through certifications. Spend around two to three months getting a foundational certification like the AWS Cloud Practitioner. This will provide you with a structured approach to learning the basics of the cloud. Once you've got that foundational knowledge, the next step is to build cloud projects. This will make sure you get hands-on practice so that you can actually apply what you've learned. It will also show employers that you have real skills with working with the technology. If you need ideas on what to build, you can check out my beginner-friendly AWS projects video over here. After that, you'll need to add your skills, certifications, and projects onto your resume and LinkedIn profile. Make sure you tailor your resume for each job application and and choose specific keywords from the job description to highlight a relevant experience. The next step is to start applying for jobs, preferably as early as you can. In fact, you don't have to wait until you've completed all your projects to feel 100% ready. The job search takes time and applying sooner gives you a head start while you continue to build your skills. Now, if you followed all the steps up until now, some of your job applications would have turned into interviews. So step number five is to prepare for them. Familiarize yourself with common interview questions and make sure you get enough practice. And lastly, don't forget the importance of networking because building connections in the industry can open doors to roles that might not be advertised publicly. To do this, you can get involved in cloud communities, attend tech meetups, and be active on LinkedIn. Now, my second tip to starting a cloud career this year is to use AI to your advantage. This year is another big one for AI. And if you're not already using tools like ChatGPT or other generative AI models, you're missing out on a huge opportunity to learn and grow faster. When I'm studying, let's say, for a new certification, I would sometimes spend over 50% of my time using ChatGPT to help me understand new concepts. And so here are three ways I personally get the most value from AI. The first one is to use ChatGPT to simplify complex concepts. If you're struggling with something like cloud networking or virtualization, it can break down these concepts into simpler, easy to understand terms. You can also ask AI to adapt to your skill level, learning style, and pace, making it a great teacher. The second way is to use it for troubleshooting and problem solving. So whenever I run into an error with my cloud projects, I would ask ChatGPT to walk through these tasks step by step, making troubleshooting faster and more efficient. And thirdly, AI can also personalize your learning journey. For example, if you want to dive deeper into a specific area like serverless or cloud security. In that case, ChatGPT can recommend a tailored study plan, resources, or even quizzes to test your knowledge. Now, if you want to get started with using AI to help you with your work, HubSpot has the perfect resource. They We've created a free guide called Supercharge Your Workday with ChatGPT. This guide is packed with practical tips and one of my favorite section is 100 ways to try ChatGPT today. Here you'll find 100 examples of how you can use ChatGPT for work, such as assist with data analytics and reporting, help create a project timeline or roadmap, along with specific prompts on how to achieve each task. It's a great list of ways you can immediately start using ChatGPT to make your day more productive. This can also help you study more effectively and learn cloud faster. And so if you want to see how AI can transform your learning and work routine, check out HubSpot's free guide by clicking the link in the description below. All right, tip number three is to turn your cloud knowledge into real world skills. Honestly, it's one thing to learn all these cloud concepts, but the key is to be able to use this knowledge in real world situations. And what companies really look for is evidence of this. To start building up your portfolio, I would recommend creating cloud projects with the AWS free tier or another cloud platform if you'd like. Experimenting and making mistakes 
weeks is one of the best ways to learn. For example, when I was just starting out with the cloud, I built a three-tier WordPress application on AWS. And doing that really helped increase my confidence because it gave me a much deeper understanding of AWS services like EC2, S3, RDS, as well as the inner workings of the Amazon VPC. As I've mentioned earlier, if you're not too sure which projects to build, you can check out the other videos on my channel for cloud project ideas. Make sure you also document your projects through either a portfolio, your GitHub, or LinkedIn profile. This will help you build up your personal brand. Speaking of personal branding, my fourth tip is to build your brand and network effectively. This is all about making sure people know who you are and what you bring to the table. One great way to start building your network is by joining local or online cloud events on meetup.com. These events connect you with people from the industry, so you can ask them questions and see if their companies have open positions. Engaging regularly in these events also keep you updated on cloud trends and lets you learn directly from the experiences of others. After attending every meetup, I would recommend posting about it on LinkedIn and staying in touch with the people you meet. If you have enough time, I'd also suggest volunteering at these events. You can ask the organizers if they need any help for future sessions and this will get you more immersed in the community. Another effective strategy is to consistently share your learning journey and projects. After each project you build, you can write a quick LinkedIn post about what you've learned, the tools you've used, and any challenges that you've faced. The secret is using hashtags like cloud computing or AWS, and this helps your posts reach more people in the cloud community. But honestly, the most important thing to remember out of all of this is to be consistent. Building a brand takes time, so make a habit of posting on LinkedIn, attending meetups, and engaging in cloud communities regularly. Try not to feel too disappointed if your first few posts don't directly translate into job opportunities. Now, when it comes to landing a job in the cloud, interviewing is one of the biggest challenges for most people. You could have all the certifications and all the projects, but if you can't pitch yourself properly in an interview, it can be tough to land the job. And so my final tip is to learn how to master the interview process. You can start by practicing common cloud interview questions. For example, be ready to explain the key cloud concepts within virtualization, networking, compute, security, and so on. Also prepare to discuss your hands-on projects in detail, as well as what's on your resume. Interviewers love answers that are clear, concise, and data-driven. You'll also need to work on your behavioral questions because most companies use these to evaluate your problem-solving skills, teamwork abilities, and most importantly, your cultural fit. One important way of structuring these answers is using the STAR method, which stands for situation, task, action, and result. Finally, consider doing mock interviews with a friend or mentor. You could also record yourself answering common questions and then re-watching the recording. Either way, the goal here is to get feedback on your answers and identify knowledge gaps. It will also get you more comfortable with saying your answers out loud. Now, if you want to boost your interview skills and stand out in the cloud job market, my AWS Interview Mastery course is the perfect next step. In this course, I walk you through proven techniques and include mock interview examples that show you exactly how to handle behavioral and technical questions. So if you want to be fully prepared for your next cloud interview, feel free to check out the course in the description below and use the code YouTube10 for 10% off. All right, so this brings us to the end of this video. If you found it helpful, please give it a like and leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.